Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Mibble University on the Dice Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Rat Queens to the Slaughter, a game designed by Erica Buyuris and Sen Fung Lim and published by Deepwater Games. We are using a prototype copy here of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Rat Queens to the Slaughter is a cooperative game with both battle and deck building elements set in the world of Curtis Weeby's and Rock Up Church's Rat Queens comic series. The game will play in two parts, first with the queens fighting waves of monsters, attempting to kill them to avoid letting them slip through into the palisade, before concluding with a final battle against a big bat, which will be made easier or harder to defeat depending on the numbers that broke through towards the start of the game. If the queens can finish off the big bat before it runs out of monster cards in its deck, then the players will win the game. To set up, separately shuffle and layer a monster deck of 6 easy monsters, 9 medium monsters, and 5 hard monsters. Place this onto the monster deck space of the palisade board. Each player chooses one of the queens, and then takes that queen's board and all of its components. This will include a mini, some friendship tokens showing that queen's picture, and all of that queen's cards. These are split into two stacks, starter cards showing an S, which are shuffled and placed face down, and upgrade cards, which show a coin cost in the bottom right corner, and these are all kept face up off to the side. To complete setup, place each of the queen minis onto a different one of the four gates on the palisade map. This is a cooperative game, so there's no turn order, you choose this among yourselves. And if you're playing with two players, do not place one on gate 4. This is not used in the two-player game. You're now ready to play. Rat Queens is played in two chapters. The first chapter where you'll be facing the monsters in the monster deck, and the final chapter where you'll be facing one of the game's big bads. Within those chapters the game is played in rounds, and each round is played in four phases. First, the planning phase, where you'll set up for the round, and each queen will draw new cards into hand. Then, either the monster phase in the first chapter, or the big bad phase in the final chapter, where the monsters or big bad will attack the queens. Then, the player phase, in which the players will use all of the cards in their hands to try to best attack the monsters. And finally, the regroup phase, where you'll resolve any undefeated monsters, and pay to upgrade your cards in order to become more powerful for future rounds. So now we'll go through each phase as it applies to the first chapter of the game in detail. The first step of the planning phase is to deal new monsters onto the gates, and you'll deal one monster off the top of the deck onto each of the four gates, or three gates if you're playing with two players. The gates will always be emptied out at the end of the previous round, so you will be filling up each gate in the game. Next, each queen draws cards. Players will have no cards in their hand at this point, because again, these are discarded at the end of the previous round. And then each player draws three cards from the top of their deck to form their hand for this round. If you ever need to draw a card at this or any other point of the game, and your draw deck is empty, then shuffle your discard pile, flipping it over to form a new draw deck, and then continue drawing until you've drawn the cards you need. This is a fully cooperative game with no restrictions on communication, so players can place their cards face up or freely talk about their cards however they wish. Finally, any players who have preparation cards among the cards in their hand may play them for their effects now. Ordinary cards are played during the player phase, which follows the monster attacks, but preparation cards can be played before those attacks. We'll talk more about the effects on these cards when we get to the player phase. Once all players are done with preparation cards, you'll move on to the monster phase. In the monster phase, each monster will attack each queen at its gate. You will resolve each of these attacks from left to right, that is gate 1 around to gate 4. This will become important later in the deck, as some of the monsters have special effects printed in text on the cards, which may move them or do other effects where the order matters. A monster with no queens at its gate will not attack and will not resolve any text in its text box. When a monster attacks a queen, 
Roll a number of combat dice based on this number on the monster's card. Then separately compare each rolled value against the armor value on the targeted queen's board. A queen's armor is the leftmost visible number on one of these circles or squares on the armor track. So right now this will be armor of one, but if this were later covered, and we'll cover that later in the video, it would be two. Each die value which exceeds the queen's armor results in one hit of damage. A roll which is equal or lower is a miss, and a roll of a rat symbol is also a miss. The rat symbol always counts as a success for the queens, and so in this context it means a miss for the enemies, but later on if the queens roll this during an attack it will count as a hit. After resolving the attack roll, resolve any text and then go to the next attack. If there are multiple queens at a monster's gate, then that monster will roll only once and that die roll will be applied to each of the queens. Once you've resolved that for all of the queens at a gate, you'll move on to the next gate. Continue this until all attacks are resolved and then proceed to the player phase. In the player phase, the players will work together to try to kill all of the monsters currently on the board. There is no set turn order. Different queens may take different actions in whatever order they wish in order to most optimally fight these monsters. There are two main types of actions that players may take. They may play cards in order to resolve the action on the card, or they may use friendship tokens which have been placed on the board in order to invoke friendship powers off the player boards. We'll talk about playing cards first. To use a card action, the player discards a card from hand and then, unless otherwise stated, resolves the action associated with each icon on the card running from left to right. Each action on the card is mandatory unless it's impossible to carry out that action. We'll now look at what the different card action icons are. The sword icon allows you to perform the basic attack against the monster at your gate, rolling the number of dice shown next to the icon. So here it would be rolling one die, whereas this attack would be rolling two. Roll the number of dice shown on the card, and then to each number rolled, unless it's a rat symbol, add your current strength, which again is the leftmost visible number on your strength track. Here it's plus zero, so this would be a value of four, but later on as you upgrade, this could be a plus one, making this into a five. Individually compare each die value against the armor value on the monster at your gate, and if the value is higher, then the monster suffers one hit. If the value is equal or lower than the die missed, and again, this rat symbol is always a hit for the rat queens, and so here you would deal one hit for this as well. If a monster ever has as many wounds as it has health, then that monster has been killed. Discard that monster from the board to the top of the discard pile, and then divide up that monster's loot among all of the queens who are at that monster's gate. Here the two coins could be split evenly, or taken by one of the queens. Loot is ultimately spent to upgrade the cards in your deck, and you're never allowed to trade loot between queens after this initial division has been done, so make sure you put the loot where it's most useful. The pentagram icon represents a queen's special action, and these vary quite a lot between the four queens. For Betty's special ability, you would roll a number of dice, depending on the card icon, and then it would give a special effect depending on the number of rats or fours that you've rolled. While for Violet's special action, the number of dice rolled, or the number rolled for success, never changes, but the amount of damage suffered by the enemy depends on which card triggered that special. This icon allows a queen to draw an extra card into hand. This icon allows a queen to heal a wound. This icon allows a queen to drop one of her friendship tokens onto her current gate, and this is the small token showing the queen's picture and colour. This doesn't have an immediate impact, but it will have an impact in the friendship action which we'll get to shortly. Finally, this is the icon for movement, and that will allow a queen to move one gate to the left or right. Gates 4 and 1 are not considered adjacent. Because it is always critical to move to where the monsters are, you do also have the weaker option to discard any card, 
irrespective of its icons, in order to take a single movement action. You'll see a similar set of icons on the preparation cards, but once again, remember that these cards have to be played during the planning phase, not the player phase. If you've held a preparation card over to the player phase, your only use for it will be to discard it for movement. These are all of the basic icons in the game. There are some other actions which are described in text as well on the cards. The other action, which each queen may take once per round, is to invoke a teammate's friendship action. Each queen may be invoked several times, but each may only invoke a teammate once. To invoke a friendship action, the queen who is calling the action must be on a gate with a friendship token of the queen who is being called. Let's say here that Violet is calling for Betty. The Betty mini is moved from wherever it is on the board to that gate. And if Betty were already at that gate, she could still be called, she just wouldn't move. Then the called queen's friendship action, which is in this box of the player board, is resolved to its maximum possible extent. Here it's rolling three dice and then dealing damage for any fours or rats that were rolled. If the friendship action can't be resolved, for example by calling Betty to a gate with no monsters, then you simply ignore this action. Then the queen who is calling for the action takes the friendship token of the called queen and adds it to the leftmost open space of either the armor or strength track. This is how you'll level up these tracks during the game, and so you can see the benefit of taking these friendship actions as often as possible. You'll also note that each queen's final armor box has an asterisk, which points you to this action at the top of the board, and this is a special action which is unlocked only when the armor track is filled. After all players have finished taking actions, you'll move on to the regroup phase. If you happen to have any cards left in hand that you didn't play, you'll discard those now. Then you may spend any money that you've earned during the round to purchase new cards from your upgrade deck. There are two types of cards, action cards and allies. To purchase an action card, you'll spend the money and then take the card and place it on top of your draw deck. This means you'll definitely draw it next round. Now to keep your deck at 9 cards, you must now discard and remove from the game any one card from your discard pile. Ally cards have the word ally printed here and these do not go into your deck. When you purchase one of these, you take the card and attach it to a gate of your choice. You do not have to remove any cards from your deck to do this. An ally at a gate will have a permanent effect which all queens may use at that gate. And there may be at most one ally per gate, so if you wish to put another ally there later in the game, the one that's there is discarded without compensation. You may retain any money that you choose not to spend until future rounds. Finally, resolve any monsters which you didn't kill during the round. You'll return any wounds they've suffered and then place the cards along the top edge of the palisade board, representing all of the monsters who've broken through. The more monsters you have up here, the less time you'll have to defeat the big bad in the final chapter, which is what we'll talk about now. The final chapter can be triggered in one of two ways. Either when you start a planning phase and there are no monsters remaining in the monster deck, or immediately when eight monsters have broken through the palisade. Now count up which type of monster broke through the palisade the most, melee, flight or magical. Here it's melee, and so you will face the melee boss, the troll girlfriend. Take the boss board and place it nearby, and then take the boss mini and place it on this skull space between gates 2 and 3. The boss is always considered to be at both of the gates between which it is standing, meaning that this boss will be able to attack queens on both gates, but queens on both gates can attack the boss. Now, shuffle up all of the monsters that you defeated earlier in the game, setting aside any which broke through the palisade, or any that are still in the monster deck if you've gone to the final fight early. The boss will be taking its actions based on drawing through these cards, and when these cards run out, the game is over and the players lose. And so, the more monsters you let through, the quicker this is going to run out. 
Resolve the planning phase the same way as you did in the first chapter, except that you'll no longer draw any new monster cards to the gates. You'll then proceed to the big bad phase, and the big bad will draw and attack with three cards from this deck. Draw and discard a card, and then note the type of monster. Here it's flying. Now, resolve the big bad attack that corresponds to that monster type. So here you would resolve the spiked maul attack, resolving all of this text to completion. Once you're done, you'll draw a second card, resolving that, and then a third. Some attacks might result in drawing additional cards, in which case you might draw more than three for this round. Once you've completed the three attacks, you'll move on to the player phase, where the queens will, as usual, play their cards to attempt to attack and defeat the big bad. And then finally, you'll go to the regroup phase. Queens can still buy new cards, although they won't be getting new loot from monsters anymore. And there's no longer any monster to break through the palisade at the end of the round. The big bad will simply stay on the board, and you'll continue fighting the big bad round to round until either winning or losing the game. The players win the game once they've dealt hit points to the big bad, corresponding to their player count. They will lose the game if the big bad ever goes to draw a card, and there are none left to be drawn. Each queen has a maximum number of wounds which can be suffered, and when the queen suffers that many wounds, she's knocked out. This does not spell the end for that queen. Instead, you'll remove all of the wounds from the board, as well as any upgrading friendship tokens on the board, and any of that queen's friendship tokens from the palisade board. Then, if you're still in the first chapter of the game, take the top two monster cards from the discard pile and add them to those that have broken through the palisade. As such, each time you're knocked out, it's going to make the big bad harder and bring the big bad closer. If you're already in the big bad fight when you get knocked down, then discard the top two cards from the big bad deck, bringing the end of the game and defeat closer. And that's how to play Rat Queens to the Slaughter. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Rat Queens to the Slaughter is going to Kickstarter. So we'll put the link in the description below when it is live so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. See you next time.